What is going on guys? I'm Matt, this is MotorWorks, and in today's video we are going to go over the charging system on my Thundercat. Alright, now this bike here has definitely been a headache, it's been a struggle, it's, it's definitely a project bike by, to every stretch of the imagination and what that means. Um, to catch you up to speed, I got this bike off a buddy of mine. It had sat for quite a few years, not running. Uh, it also had an issue where it wouldn't go over 70 miles an hour. So basically I just took the whole entire bike apart. We rebuilt the forks, uh, uh, cleaned out, rebuilt the carburetors, uh, checked over the jet kit that was installed, uh, new tires, new brake pads, new brake fluid. We went over the entire bike, oil, cooling system, everything serviced on it uh, because we had a track day coming up and, and I wanted a bike for my track day so got it all done got it to the track day first session of the day 20 minutes took it out rode it around ran great went over 70 miles an hour no problems it was an awesome experience because it was the first time I was on the track and the bike performed flawlessly for the first session it was great fast forward to the second session Made about a lap and a half around, bike shut off, and wouldn't start. So pulled off the side of the track. It was awesome because it was a track day. They had people to come pick you up. So they came around, picked me up on a trailer, took me back into the pits. Got back to the pits, and the bike started and ran again. So I don't know. I uh, slept it parked because I didn't want to risk it and take it out uh, for the next section. Luckily my boss was there and let me borrow his bike so I did get to finish out the track day and, and if you ever get a chance I highly recommend taking your motorcycle on a racetrack. It was a great experience and it was, it was a very fun time out on the racetrack and I cannot wait to go back and do another one. But that's not what this video is about. This video is all about the charging system. I actually did figure out what is going on and why my motorcycle shut off. And in today's video, we're actually going to go over the charging system and see what the issue was and, and why the bike stopped running. And then we'll get the parts ordered up and we'll fix that in an upcoming video. But today, all about the charging system. What I like to do is just with the key off, I check the voltage and see... As long as you got over 12.5 volts, you should be good. This one's sitting at about 12.7. Then we'll turn the key on and we'll see if it drops. Alright, so it does drop. Drops to 12.3 with the key on. So now we're going to start the bike and see where it's charging at. What's crazy is when I turn the ignition off, it actually starts to create its own voltage again. So my battery is a more efficient charging system than my charging system right now. So since there was no change in voltage, it actually started to go down. It means the charging system is not working. So we have to figure out why that is. The way the charging system on a motorcycle works versus the charging system on a car is on a car you have an alternator and the alternator contains both the stator as well as the regulator rectifier alright so if one or the other goes bad on your car usually the mechanic says your alternator's bad they just replaced the entire alternator now you can get that rebuilt and then they'll actually go in and diagnose uh, what was actually wrong with it whether it was the stator or the regulator rectifier but you have to send the alternator off and a, a separate shop will have to test it. Most mechanics and garages don't actually test your alternator anymore. Now why am I rambling about car alternators? Well, it's pretty much the same when it comes to motorcycles. You have a stator 
and you have a regulator rectifier. The only difference is they're separate. All right, and I'll show you here what I mean. <clears throat> Now the stator is behind this cover here, and it looks just like this here. I have a little picture up here displayed. All right. Basically all it is is a bunch of copper wire wrapped around basically toothpicks. I think I've seen some uh, rebuilt ones made out of toothpicks. Anyway, it sits inside of a magnetic field. It's a magneto as it's called because it's got a bunch of magnets inside of the flywheel of this bike. And as that spins around, that generates electricity. Now the electricity it generates is AC voltage, the same voltage that you have in your household. All right. Now you need for a motorcycle DC voltage or direct current, AC being alternator, alternating current and uh, DC voltage being direct current. All right. So you need that direct current, and this is producing alternating current. So, from the stator, comes up to the regulator rectifier. Now in here, this converts your AC voltage to DC voltage, and then makes it usable for the bike, mainly to recharge the battery. The battery's purpose is to power everything up, the stator and regulator rectifier's job is to charge the battery. Now the reason why it's important to know that a motorcycle has a separate stator from regulator rectifier is kind of important because you can test uh, one or the other and you can replace one or the other. Now it's usually recommended to replace both but if you're in a pinch and um, you just need to get by for whatever reason, you can diagnose which one is bad and just replace the bad part. And then it should work just fine after that. All right, so when the stator is actually producing the alternating current, it's going through the wiring harness. And since the stator itself is replaceable, it does plug in. That's where you usually will find problems in any charging system on any bike is right at that plug and this bike is no different. So if you look right here, you see the plug is starting to melt. All right, now I cannot pull this apart. This is stuck together. Yeah, that's stuck together. What I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to cut these wires and these wires and I'm actually going to have to test to make sure that the stator itself is okay and as long as it is we will just bypass this plug and hook the wires directly into the wires on the other side and we'll go past this plug. What happens is over time the connectors in here become loose. All right, now. If anybody knows electricity, anytime you have a loose connection, it adds resistance. The added resistance creates heat, and that's actually what ends up melting these plugs. So the simple fix, and the fix I'm going to do, as long as everything checks out, is I will just disconnect these three wires, these three wires here, and I will just solder this together and eliminate this plug altogether. And as long as everything's good, that should take care of my issue. guys as you can see it's just twisted together and this is just temporary all right so now what we're going to do is actually switch over to DC voltage and we're going to see if our battery is now charging all right so we switched over to volts DC on the 20 volt setting there now we're going to see, moment of truth, fingers crossed, toes crossed, whatever. See if the battery now charges. Again, we always want to check our voltage before we start charging. 
or before we start the bike and then we'll check our voltage when the bike's on versus when the bike's running. So our voltage should be higher than 12.49 volts and it should be somewhere in the 13 and a half to 14 volt range. But we're going to see if it is. basically a free fix I mean yeah I have all the diagnostic tools the multimeter stuff like that but that's great it's not gonna cost me anything really to fix it I gotta just get some uh, stuff to solder that with I have to get my uh, little fancy soldering connectors I have um, so I'm gonna have to save that for another video because I just don't have the stuff now I just want to get this video out for you guys to show you that we are making progress on the bike and it, it is moving forward Hopefully that took care of the running problem. I'm about 99% sure it did, but we'll see. At least it's charging the battery now. I'll have to go out and take it for a long test drive whenever I get that stuff buttoned up. But in the next video, we're going to kind of continue. And I'll probably have it buttoned up before then. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll do a little video on that. But we're definitely installing uh, Racetech suspension components in the bike. I have uh, stiffer springs for my fat butt on this bike, so it'll be set up for my weight. And then I also went and got the gold valves for inside the forks so that my suspension works more like it's supposed to and I get a little bit of adjustability for um, the next potential track day that I take this bike to. I think plans for this, future plans for this, um, in the near future is going to be take it to the drag strip and see what it does because that's what I do. I, anything I own has been to the drag strip so that's going to be the next track I take it to but after that I'll probably try and get out to another track day before the end of the year. But that's going to do it for this video guys. If you like the video as always leave a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button if you haven't already and Thanks for checking this one out, guys. We'll see you in the next video. I'm Matt. This is MotorWorks.